Hey everybody, in this video we're going to be showing you a fantastic method of painting a Custodian Warden, who is of course a warrior of the Adeptus Custodis for Warhammer 40,000 by Games Workshop. We're going to be showing you a method of painting the miniature in that classic colour scheme. So this is that lovely gold arm with all those beautiful details and the deep reds on the miniature too. And we're going to be giving you some great advice on how to add some variety of tones onto the gold to make it a little bit more interesting and to break it up a little bit too. Now if you do like what you see here then be sure to subscribe to our channel and also hit the notification bell. And if you really like it then why not head over to duncanroads.com where you'll find loads more videos like this. In fact at the time of recording this we're at nearly 200 and they're all full content showing you how to paint loads and loads of different miniatures. But anyway without further ado let's get painting. To paint your custodies, the first thing that you need to do is to undercoat your models. And for these ones, if you have access to it, I recommend you go for a golden spray. So in this case, I've used some Retribute Armor Spray from Citadel. But you could go for other colors because the first thing that we need to do is to paint the model with a paint on version of the gold. So you can go for a gray undercoat, a khaki undercoat, the choice really is yours. Whatever you choose, the first stage is though to paint the miniature entirely with Retribute Armor from Games Workshop. And the reason for this, though it might seem a little bit strange if you spray the model gold, is because what we need to do is to get an even tone of gold on there. And if you ever tried spraying a model with these gold sprays and then immediately put a wash onto it, you'll know very well that the wash tends to run off them almost like water off a window. So it can be quite frustrating to get it to settle right. So if you paint it gold first of all, what you'll find suddenly is the wash later on settles much more uh, consistently and gives you a nicer finish. So it's worth taking the time to do it. Now if like me you have sprayed your model gold, this means this stage is going to be really quick because we can just do one thin coat here. But if you've gone for another colour just apply a few thin coats just to get an even finish to it. But what you need to do to actually do this though is get hold of an older brush and I have here a small dry brush from the army painter that I keep around for this kind of purpose. And we just need to get some of this gold onto the palette and then as ever thin it down with just a little touch of water. So just a small amount mixed in there to make it nice and smooth and then we're ready to apply it to the miniature. Now there are a few other advantages to doing this as well beyond simply making the wash stick onto the model later on. It also means we can look for any parts of the spray where we may have missed it and just make sure we paint them in so it's nice and even. In addition we can make sure the colour's a little bit consistent too because sometimes this gold spray can change colour dependent on the weather outside and how warm it is. So what we need to do is just make sure we get that even coat by painting it all over the miniature like this, just checking to make sure it doesn't clog up too much in any recesses, then let it dry completely before you move on to the next step. Stage. With that base coat done you can see we've now got a much more even gold and I have in fact painted it on everything including all the robes, the plume and the spear because as I mentioned having that gold on there is going to help other paints grip. So not just the wash, even the other base coats as we apply them to the model are now going to stick much better. But with that done what we can do now is move on to applying a wash onto that gold armour to really enrich it, give it a nice warm feel. And for this what we need is some Reichland Flesh Shade. But I'm actually going to use two versions at the same time. What I've got is Reichland Flesh Shade and I've also got Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss. Now this might seem a little bit strange but what I'm going to do is mix the two colours together and the reason is because there's properties of each kind of paint that I want to bring into this and if I use just one on its own I wouldn't get quite the same result. So for example if I just use Reichland Flesh Shade on its own what it would do is matte down the model a lot and the gold would lose a lot of its luster. Likewise if I just used the gloss it would end up very very shiny and too shiny in fact it would look quite wet. In addition the gloss washers can run off the model even with that gold that we put onto it so far. So by bringing the two paints together what I'm actually going to get is a more satin finish so still some of that luster and some of that shine but it's also not just going to run off the model as well. So what we need to do is set up that wash and for this what I've got is a monster brush from the army painter but any larger brush like do like this will do just fine. And what we've got to do is make that mix first of all and we're looking for roughly 50-50 on the palette. So I'm going to start out with my regular one. So there's one, two and three. There we go. And then we want roughly the same amount of the gloss. So start out with one and then two and three. And there we go, got roughly the same amount and it's just a matter of mixing those together and really making sure they're nicely mixed before applying it to the model. And with this all we've got to do is wash over everything that we want to be gold. So this does include the details that appear on the spear and things like that, so bear that in mind. But all you've got to do is just pick a starting point, so for example on the leg just here, start washing it all over so it settles in that recess detail and gives that nice warmth to all of that gold. 
Now, once you have applied this all over the model, it will take a bit of time to dry, so be sure to leave it for around about 45 minutes, and also keep an eye on how it collects as it settles as well, because it is possible that it will tend to run towards the bottom of details, and it can clog up and leave kind of blobs and things. So, for example, if you spot something like that's going off on the leg. If you spot it really getting quite thick on there, just use your brush like a sponge just to draw away the excess and redistribute it elsewhere around the miniature. The wash is now completely dry and you can see it's given that nice warmth of the gold and definition too. And also it hasn't gone super shiny. It's also not gone really matte either. So it's an ideal kind of point that we want it to be before we now move on to the next stage, which is going to be to do some layering to bright things up a little bit on the flat panels and put a bit of shine there where the light's gonna be catching it. So for this, what we need to do is return to Retributor Armor, but then what we're gonna do is introduce a second tone of gold with some Liberator Gold. Now the reason for this is just having a single gold across the entire miniature, of which there's quite a lot, can look a little bit bland. So we're going to break it up by introducing that second tone on all the decoration. But first of all, we need the first tone, so Retributor Armor. And to apply it, I've got a medium layer brush here from Citadel for more control than we had for that original base coat, because we need to be more precise this time. So what you need to do is just thin it down on your palette with that little bit of water to make sure it's nice and smooth, bringing it down to about this point. And then importantly, just make sure you remove the excess off your brush so that you don't have loads on there, so that you can keep that point in the brush and therefore keep it under control. Because this time, when applying it, what we're looking for is these armor panels and we're looking to avoid the recesses where more of that wash settled. So for example, on the shoulder plate just here, you can see this kind of recessed part we've got. We want to paint the flat of it, but not go quite into the corners where we've got more of that reddish kind of brown from the wash. So just kind of carefully in the middle there like that. Then we skip past the recess and carry on again on the other side. So along there, for example, picking out that trim. So this way you can see we're getting that nice shine, but also we're retaining the definition from all of the wash. With that layering done, you can see we've now got a lovely shine on all of that gold armor. And what we can do now is pick out the second tone using some Liberator Gold. And this is essentially for anything that's decorative on the armor. So for example, on the leg, you can see we've got this bigger quiller just here. With this color, what we want to do is layer this using that same technique as what we just did. So we're looking to paint the flat parts and avoiding the recesses. Now on details like this, you can actually approach using the side of the brush. And you can see here, it's quite easy just to pick out that raised detail and so get that lighter gold just on the raised parts. But there are some areas where you just need to take a little bit more care. For example, we've got this kind of eagle on top of the helmet just here. And whilst it's easy to get the top of the pinions just kind of going along like that, when it comes to the sort of feather design, just take your time using the tip of your brush, just paint it on the flat area so as to keep some of that shading in the recesses. And with that, we now have those two tones of gold on the miniature as well. And so we can leave the gold for the time being and start to base coat some other colors that appear in the miniature. And for this, we're gonna start out with the black details for which I'm gonna be using some Corvus Black. And the reason why I'm going for Corvus Black here is because it's a nice off black here. It's actually a very dark gray. So later on when we put a black wash over the top of it, we'll get some depth and some shading on it. So what we need to do is start picking out details with this. Now, when you're moving on to this color, if you haven't already, be sure to get some clean water because if you haven't, by this point, there's gonna be a lot of metal flecks floating around in that water. And they can contaminate your other colors. So be sure to get some clean water. So as you thin the paint down, it doesn't contaminate it. And we do need to thin it down just a little bit like that. And using the small brush, and it's a small layer brush I've got here, we can now start picking these details out. Now, first of all, what we need to look for is any joints in the armor. So they tend to be quite hidden away, but for example, you can see the back of his leg just here. We want to get the sort of ridged part. So we're looking at areas such as along here, and also these little bits around the feet as well, just around areas like that. In addition, most of the Guardian Spear is this color as well. So what we're looking for here is kind of the casing of it on the main part of the haft. So we're looking at areas such as around here. And as you're doing this, this is why having the small brush is so useful because we need to paint in amongst all these swirls. So just take your time. The first coat might be a bit translucent, but don't worry about it. Just let it dry and apply a second thin coat in the exact same way. And if you approach it in this way, going in with two coats in mind, what you'll find is you get much more control as you start going around these finer details details. With all those black details now base coated, we can move on to the next base coat, which is going to be a silver for all the silver details. And here I'm gonna use some iron hand steel. Now to apply it, once again, I'm gonna use that small layer brush because the application here is just the same as what we've just done with the black. We're looking for all these details and then as neatly as possible, we just need to pick them out. So remember to help out with that, make sure your paint's thinned down nicely on your palette. And then just as importantly, just make sure the brush isn't overloaded with too much paint so you can keep that accuracy with it. 
And for this, what we're looking for, first of all, on the body of the Custodes is, well, the faceplate of him, which can be a little bit tricky getting into, but we're looking at this sort of flat area just here, just carefully maneuver the brush in this area to get this part, kind of the panel that goes just beneath the eyes. So we're looking at that sort of area just there. In addition, what we've got are these cables on the front of the body. So we're looking at these ones going all the way around to the back. So just blocking in this texture around here. And on the back, there are some vents which we need to pick out too. So we're looking at painting the silver inside these parts here. Now, in addition, there is, of course, quite a bit of silver on the Guardian Spear. So at this stage, what we need to do is just take our time looking for the silver parts. And it's essentially the internal structure. So we're looking at things such as this bar down here, this little bar that appears at the back just there, then all the kind of mechanical parts of the bolter. So we're looking at things such as this detail around here, and of course, the muzzle of the gun. With that silver applied, you can see now we're really starting to break up all of that gold and add lots of little details into the miniature. And so what we can do now is carry on doing this with a few other base coats. And we've got three more to do now. First of all, we need a bright red for the plume. So here I'm gonna use some Mephiston red. And then we've got the robes. And here I'm gonna go for a different tone of red to really mark out it being a different material. So here I'm gonna use some corn red. Finally, we've got all the leather to base coat. And for this, we need kind of very reddish brown. So here I'm gonna use some Doomball brown. But first of all, we need Mephiston Red, and to apply it, I'm sticking to that small layer brush. And with this, all we need to do is just block in all of that plume using the same sort of techniques that we've been using so far. So just a solid base coat for this first stage. What we've got to do then is make sure that paint's thinned down as ever, and make sure your brush isn't overloaded, and then it's just a matter of blocking this in. So we're looking at this area around here, and as you apply this colour, you just need to be really careful whenever you get close to the helmet. So just take your time around there, but otherwise it's just a matter of blocking all of this in. Next up, we need some corn red, and this is going to be for the fabric of this kind of robe that he's got around here. And I'm still using a small layer brush, mainly for control as I'm going around this armor plate on the thigh. So you can see, you can just really take my time making sure the paint's worked into all the nooks and crannies around here. But of course, feel free to change as you need to, especially when you're doing the more open areas around here. And finally, we're then ready for some Doomball Brown, and this is for the leather details, such as on the gauntlets. And bear in mind, when you're painting the gauntlets, there are still a few gold details here, so be careful of those, in particular things like the fingers and the thumb. But just take your time blocking this in with, again, two thin coats. Also keep an eye out for any little straps, such as the ones on the legs just down here, and also the grips of the weapons as well. And with that, we've now finished applying all the main base coats on the miniature and can now move on to applying a wash onto those details to give them some definition, just like we did with the gold armor. Only here, what we need is a black wash to ensure a nice clean finish to all these details. So for this, I'm gonna use some Nuln Oil. Now throughout this, what we need to do is just apply it onto the colors that we've added since we did the gold. So what you need to do is just pick brushes that are appropriate to the different parts that you're doing and just change as you need to. For example, I'm starting out here with a small layer brush for the more intricate parts, but you might wanna go for a larger one for the robes. Throughout this, it's just a matter then of just controlling how much you have on your brush and just carefully applying it over these new colors. So for example, on the leather, on the gauntlets, I just want to very carefully apply it and just push it around so I keep it off the gold, but only get it onto that leather detail. The black wash is now completely dry, and so we can move on to the next phase, which is going to be to do some layering with these new colors that we've introduced. And we don't need to worry about the leather because that needs to stay nice and dark, but there are three of the details that we need to do this on. So first of all, I'm gonna be returning to corn red for the robes, and then we're gonna move on to a very small amount of iron hand steel for the silver, and finally Mephiston red for that plume. But first of all, we need corn red, and for this, what we're looking to do is apply it quite selectively onto the robes. And so you can see I've got a little bit here, I'm just gonna add a bit more to it. But with this, what we need to do is thin it down so we have that control over it. So just bring it down to around about this sort of consistency here. You see, it's flowing very nicely from my brush. It's a little bit translucent. This is the right sort of thing for what we need. And I'm using a small layer for this as well to keep lots of control over it. And what we're looking to do on these robes is to, first of all, carefully look at them, because if you see around here, it's very nice and clear here, you've got a really dark color in the very deepest recess, so almost black in the very deepest part just there, but the surrounding red has also been stained darker from that black wash. And what we want to do is retain some of that. So we're gonna very carefully apply this. So if you look at the darkest part there, we wanna leave it really dark, and the dark red showing just above it, and then just above that, we're gonna reintroduce the pure corn red. So this way we get a transition between all those colors, and this adds volume and depth to these details. So very carefully along there like that. And once again, as we go above that, you can see we've got the really dark part and the stained dark part, and we want to go just above that. So around about there. And it's just a matter of repeating this across all these robes to get that nice highlight starting to come through.
Once you finish that on the robes, you're then ready for some iron hand steel. And this is really just for the face plate. So don't worry about the spear. Instead, what we're looking to do is just introduce a bit of this color into the middle of these parts. So just keeping away from the shading on either side, just to get that shine once again on this silver detail. And then finally, we can layer the plume using Mephiston Red. And for this, you can see we've got a lot of texture to pick out. So just approach it using the side of your brush and just skim along like this. The bristles can only catch that raised area to help them stand out a little bit more and make it a bit brighter. And with that layering done, we can now move on to the next phase of painting the miniature, which is going to be to highlight it. And what we're going to start out with here is the longest stage by far, which is to highlight the main body of the gold armor. So this is anything that has retributor armor as its current mid-tone. And for this, what we need is some liberator gold. And what we're going to do here is edge highlighting with it. So do this, what you need is a fine brush with a good point on it. So I'm still using that small layer brush from Citadel. And with this, what we need to do first of all is just get the paint thinned down to the correct amount. So what we're looking for is a sweet spot where it flows well from the brush, but not so watery that it runs out of control. So you just need to kind of play around with it on the palette to get that feel for it. And a good way to test it is just have a go at painting lines. Now, if you can keep on painting lines like this, you see it's flowing well from the brush, I can just keep on going and going, then you're at a good point. So I'm happy with that, and with that, I'm ready to apply it. So we just need to make sure there isn't loads on the brush and just bring the bristles to a nice point. And with this, then what we're looking for is all the edges. And the good thing about Custodis is that these edges are actually very well defined. So doing this is a lot easier and quicker than you might ex expect at first. Because what we can do is move in with the side of the brush, there's an edge like this, and just skim all the way around it to get that highlight on that edge really quickly and easily. And to do this, you just need to turn the model to whatever angle makes you comfortable, so long as you can approach it with the side of your brush like that and just work your way around. So just keep turning the model as you need to, skimming all the way along, and this way you can see it's very quick and easy to get that nice highlight on the shoulder plate like that. Now, sometimes you won't quite be able to do that because the edge won't be standing out so much or it might be tricky to get to, in which case you need to use the tip of your brush, such as this little edge we've got around on the inside of the shoulder plate here. In this case, just angle the model so you're looking straight at it and paint in a downward motion towards yourself using the tip of the brush so you just get a little bit of that gold along the edge. And once again, just change the angle of the model as you need to to be able to reach that point so you get that nice highlight. But as you can see, the most of these edges actually stand out really nicely, so it's very easy just to skim along using the side of your brush and all those details that are painted with Retributor Armor. And there we are, with that done, we've now got a nice highlight on the main body of the gold, and we can move on to our next highlight, which is going to be with a silver. And what we need here is some Stormhost silver. And this is going to be for those silver details, such as on the Guardian Spear, but also the decorative gold. So anything earlier on that we layered using Liberator gold. So all those white gold details. Now the application is going to be just the same as what we've just done. So I'm still using that small layer brush, and it's just a matter of finding that sweet spot when thinning down the paint so that it flows really nicely from the brush, but not so thin that it runs out of control. And this looks pretty good to me, so I'm happy with that. And with this, once again, wherever possible, I'm looking to use the side of the brush, though there's often cases where you won't quite be able to. Now, with all the swirls and things, these patterns on the armor, it's very easy to approach them with the side of the brush, just very gently skimming along to get that little flash, that bright silver to highlight those parts and make them stand out. But with things such as the little eagle designs, you can use the side of the brush wherever possible, but if you can't quite get into those details and just turn it to use a tip of your brush, just following along those edges. In addition, we need to apply this on the silver details now. So around on the spear, you can see we've got all the silver around the bolt gun just up here. So once again, just look for the edges and just gently follow around just to give them a nice highlight to finish those areas off. And with that, all those metallics are now highlighted, and so we can move in now to start painting some of the other details with some highlights. And we're gonna start out with the black. For this, what we need is a dark gray. So here I'm gonna use some Mechanica Standard Gray, applied once again with that small layer brush, because here we're looking for very much the same thing as what we've just been doing on the metallics, so now it's just on those black details. So as ever, get that paint thinned down and ready, just testing it on your palette to make sure it's flowing well, and then it's just a matter of looking for those edges. So on the Guardian Spear, for example, you can see we've got this kind of black casing with lots of edges on it. It's just a matter of looking for those edges and very carefully picking them out wherever possible using the side of the brush. But again, if you can't quite reach it with the side of your brush, just use the tip and just go in that downward motion to get the highlights along that edge.
Now that all the black's been highlighted, we can move on to the reds. And we're actually going to be starting out here with the plume, for which we need two colours. First of all, some Evelson Scarlet, and then a very small amount of Wild Rider Red, just to help it pop a little bit more. But first we need Evelson Scarlet, and to apply it still, I'm going to be using that small layer brush. And with this, we're just looking to pick out the kind of raised parts of the strands of the hair. So to do this, all you've got to do is make sure you approach it very lightly using the side of your brush. So if you just set the paint up, just load it up like this, and making sure again it's nice and smooth. All we got to do is just angle the brush so that you're kind of coming at it from this sort of angle relative to the strands of the hair. And all you do is just very gently skim along it so you get just a little bit of this colour catching those raised strands. Once the plume's been brought up to this point, we're then ready to move on to Wild Rider Red. And for this, we're doing much the same technique, just a little bit lighter and a bit more focused. And what we're looking to do here is to do this just kind of on this sort of crescent shape we've got at the top of the plume as it comes out the helmet. So this sort of area just here, then also just a little bit wherever it flicks up at the end. So in this case, we're looking at these parts down here, but also these little bits that are sticking out along here. And there we go, the plume's complete. So now we can move on to that red fabric to finish that off too. And this once again needs two colours. So first of all, we need some Wazdaka red and then a little bit of squig orange, which at the same time we can also use to highlight the leather. But first we need Wazdaka red. And again, I'm using that small layer brush for this because here, once again, we're looking for the sharpest details, which in the case of the fabric are gonna be the peaks of the creases and also the outside edge of it too. So just prepare the paint just as you have been doing for those other stages. So bringing it down to about that point there. And then what we're looking for is the tops of those little creases running along here. Now, often you can approach them with the side of your brush once again, just gently skimming along. But as always, when you can't quite get into that part, just angle the model so you're painting down towards yourself and just follow that edge all the way down in this kind of sweeping motion going all the way down there like that. Once that's done, we can then move on to squig orange. And this is first of all going to be a fine highlight on the robes. And here we're looking for the parts of the curves that really stand out the most. So it usually means, if we take a look at this one sweeping around here, usually means just applying a little bit of this colour to the part that stands out, such as just around there. And it'll tend to just curve along in the middle of the previous highlights that we've got, just to help that just stand out a bit more. In addition, we can use this colour to be a highlight on the leather too. So for example, the gauntlet here, what we're looking for is an edge highlight, just following along all those sharp edges as neatly as possible. And with that, our custodies is very nearly finished and we're ready to move in for some finer details, starting out with the eyes. Now, looking at them just here, you can see the eyes are currently quite dark, which is ideal for the sort of effect we're going to go for here. And if yours are currently a little bit lighter than this, just run a little bit of normal oil into the lenses before starting this phase, because what we're going to do here is a nice, simple kind of glowing effect to help them pop. For this, what we need is some corn red, first of all, followed by Evelson Scarlet and then some Fire Dragon Bright. But first of all, we need that corn red and to apply it, definitely go for your smaller brushes here. And I'm using my small layer, but feel free to go for a smaller brush should you want to. And for this, the key thing is to, again, make sure you thin the paint down correctly. So just add small amounts of water as you need to until you're about this point here. And the idea here is that it's going to flow well from the brush, but not flow out of control. So a little bit like with edge highlighting. But in this case, rather than looking for the edges, we're actually looking for the middle of the eye. So just hold the model nice and steady in your hands here, really bracy, nice and comfortable and aren't shaking or anything. Steadily move in and then just paint this color into the middle of the lens, leaving some of that darker color still showing around the outer edge. Next up, we need some Evelson Scarlet. And for this, we're going to be applying it in much the same way, making sure our hands are really braced and the model's nice and steady. And then again, moving in at this angle, just to paint a thinner line of this color right in the middle of each eye. And then finally, we need some Fire Dragon Bright. Once again, applied in the same sort of way, just with an even narrower line, just right in the middle of each of the eye lenses. With those eyes painted, we're now ready for the next small detail, which is going to be all the gems, of which there are quite a few. And here we're going to go for a nice bluish green kind of colour as a nice contrast against all that gold and red on the miniature. So for this, the base coat to use is actually some Stegged on Scale Green, but then what we're going to use is some Araman Blue for the first highlight, followed by a small amount of Baharoth Blue, then a very, very small amount of Matte White from the Army Painter. But any pure white will do here. If you want to stick to Citadel paints, then White Scar is the one to use in this case. 
But first of all, what we need is some staggered on scale green and to apply it again, go for your small brush. So I'm back to my small layer brush just here. And for this first color, all we've got to do is base coat each of these gems. So once you've got that paint thinned down and ready, it's just a matter of looking for them. And there can be quite a few and they can be hidden away. But there's a nice clear example here, right in the middle of the chest. For this first color, all you've got to do is just block in the entire thing as neatly as possible. Once you've found and base coated all those gems, the next thing to do is apply the first highlight using Araman Blue. And with this, what we're looking to do is a little crescent in that sort of lower left of each of the gems. So just very gently, a little almost C shape just there. Next up, we're ready for some Baharoth Blue. And with this color, what we need to do is an even finer line. Again, that sort of little crescent shape in that same corner. So just focus a little bit more towards there. And then finally, you need your pure white. So in this case, I'm using matte white. And with this, all we gotta do is just a little dot in the opposite corner, just to give that appearance of reflected light. And with that, the gems are now complete. And so we can move on to the final detail of painting the Custodis, which is that distinctive blue glowing energy blade on the Guardian Spear. Now, if you're painting a Custodis who's holding a sword or even an ax, you can paint this in the exact same way as what we're gonna be doing here. And the first stage of doing it is to base coat with a nice rich royal blue. So here I'm gonna be using some Cantor blue and to apply it, I've actually switched to a medium layer brush just for a little bit more coverage as we block this area in. And for this first step, all we've gotta do is make sure we get an even base coat across the blade and be really careful about the gold details surrounding it. So as ever, let's make sure you've got your paint thinned down and ready. And once you've done so, it's just a matter of applying it onto the blade. So what we're looking at just around here is to make sure we're nice and steady, which might mean hold the model quite strangely like this. But as long as you're nice and steady and comfortable, it's just a matter then of just moving in just to block in the whole of the blade. Once you have that flat blue on the blade, the next thing to do is to start to build up the kind of energy effect for it. And for this, the first thing we need is some Sotec green. Now to apply it, what we're gonna be doing is a little bit of layering here. And I suggest switching to a smaller brush. So now I'm using my small layer brush again. And with this, the idea here is to apply it just to some select parts of the blade. So just thin it down as ever, bringing it down to around about this sort of point here. And then if we take a close look at the blade with these weapons, you'll see they generally have two kind of layers to them. You've got this sort of flat layer just here, then it arcs downwards towards a cutting edge, and then there's another flat edge as it gets close to the actual cutting edge itself. So you wanna kind of follow along those areas. So first of all, for the raised up area at the back, for this, what we want is a layer of this color towards this sort of area, and just letting some of that Cantor blue still show through where it meets that little eagle design just there. Then you can see it can got a very sharp line as it encounters the part where it arcs in. So we just skip past that, then apply this again onto the flatter part where it arcs flatter, so along there. So you can see this way we get kind of two bands of this color. Once you finish that layer on both sides of the blade, the next thing to do is to push it a bit further with a highlight now. And for this, what we need is some Temple Guard Blue, again applied using that small brush, so back to the small layer brush. And this time we're almost gonna be edge highlighting it, but there's a little bit more to it for that kind of top layer on the blade where we just need a little bit more control. So get your paint ready for that sort of purpose, so thin down as ever to around about this point. And then what we're looking for, first of all, is that edge highlight on the actual cutting edge of the blade. So just approach using the side of your brush and just skim all the way down very gently in this kind of sweeping motion, all the way down to the base of it, and then turn the model and bring it down along the back as well. And this includes the part where it arcs in, so all the way across there. Same with this little notch that we've got on the bottom just there. Now the bit where we need a little bit more control is that edge where we've got that kind of sharp line between the darker blue and the lighter blue. And so for this, just angle the model so you're painting downwards and with the tip of the brush, just very carefully follow this all the way down. If you do make any mistakes, don't worry about it. You can always neaten up again before you continue. Once you've got that highlight established on the blade, the next thing to do is to really bring these colors together. And for this, what we need is a deep blue wash. So here I'm gonna use some Drakenhof Nightshade and to apply it, I've jumped back to my medium layer brush because I want a nice smooth coverage here, probably in just one motion. So this is about the right sort of size for it. So what you gotta do is just get a small amount in your brush using the palette to help control how much is on there. So there we go. And with this then, we're just looking for that even coverage. So starting at the top of the blade, all we've gotta do is just bring it evenly across the entire thing all the way over like this so it settles nicely in the recesses and helps tie those colors together. The 
The wash is now completely dry and you can see it's helped ease those colors together. But what we need to do now is just reestablish the highlights. So this time we need to return to Temple Guard Blue, but then we're gonna add in a pure white. So it's back to matte white for that. But first of all, we need Temple Guard Blue and to apply it again, I'm using the small layer brush because here what we're looking to do is to largely retrace our steps from the previous time we applied this color. So let's get it ready in the same way that we had for the previous time. And so just brought down to about that point there. And it's just a matter of repeating that process of first of all, that edge highlight on the outer edge. So again, just skimming all the way around along there. And then we want that fine highlight on the inside as well. So again, just really bracing your hands so you're nice and steady and just following this one round as well. Once that's done, we're then ready to move on to matte white. And for this, what we want is a sharper highlight on the edge for the brightest part. So in this case, it's gonna be a matter of just gently skimming down the actual cutting edge like that to get that little bit of white appearing towards the tip and just bringing it up to there. Then a small amount on the reverse of the tip. So we're looking at just along there. And then finally, we just want a little bit of it on this curving part just here. So again, just brace your hands, see nice and steady. Just introduce a little bit of this color on this area here. And with that highlight now applied, you can see we've got a really nice energy effect on the blade. And you could leave it there if you want to, but if you want to add the lightning effect to it as well, then what you can do is move on to that now. It is entirely optional, but if you want to do it, what you'll need to do is return to Temple Guard Blue, and then you'll need that matte white once again. But first of all, we need Temple Guard Blue, and to apply it, I'm still gonna use the small layer brush. But in this case, just use the smallest brush you've got with the finest tip you've got, because now we need some really accurate control. And getting this ready is, once again, all about thinning the paint down correctly, kind of bringing it down to quite a runny point really. So sort of about this sort of level just here. But then really importantly, just make sure you don't have much on your brush because what we need is that fine tip on there because using that, what we need to do is start tracing these kind of energy lines that we've got on it. So the lightning effect really. So what we do is just pick random locations and just do ever so slightly squiggly lines, just kind of going across to a distance about that and then move in another direction kind of like that. So it's like a sort of crisscross pattern, just working your way across the blade. Once you're happy with those lightning bolts, the next thing to do is to move on to matte white. And with this, all we're gonna do is just put a very small amount of this color on any point where these different lines intersect with each other. So just very carefully in areas such as just there, just to get that brightest flash of the lightning. Now, once you've done this, your miniature is ready to be based. And as ever, it's entirely your choice how you base it. But in this case, I'm gonna go for an urban rubble base. And with the base now fully painted, this warden is complete and ready to stand in defense of the Emperor's realm. So when painting your custodians, a key thing to look for is all those decorations on the armor and to paint them in a different shade of gold to add a little bit of variety and help break up the miniature because there is a lot of gold on these figures. But by following the methods and techniques we've shown in this video, you can also paint any sort of custodian you may want to do, be it Alaris Terminators, characters, or even the regular custodians. So have fun painting your miniatures and we'll see you again very soon.